Isn't it time to get away, to jump in, to tee up, to get out and explore, to stay in and indulge, to feel the inspiration of wide open spaces? Whenever you're ready for a getaway, Palm Desert is where you'll be able to do it all safely. Find your happy pace in Palm Desert. Hello and welcome to Palm Desert Food and Wine Virtual Experience presented by the City of Palm Desert. I'm Tally Fantini with Palm Springs Life and Palm Desert Food and Wine and we welcome you and thank you for joining us. Please know that you can purchase tickets for the in-person Palm Desert Food and Wine March 25th through March 27th at palmdesertfoodandwine.com. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with tonight's virtual demo with Chef Claudio Marfia of Il Corso doing It's Almost Like We're in Capri. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Claudio Marfia, Chef of Il Corso in Palm Springs. Um, today I'm going to try to pre help you prepare um, three of my dishes. Um, first will be a spaghetti aragosta, which is a spaghetti with lobster tail. Um, next will be a saltimbocca la romana the veal cutlet with the prosciutto sage. And for a light, simple dessert, today we're gonna to do a zabaione uh, con frutti di bosco. Um, so let's get started. Uh, spaghetti aragosta. To start, we're gonna need a four to five ounce lobster tail. Four to five ounce usually goes about for one serving, for one person. We're gonna start by deshelling the lobster. We're going to keep half the shell for a garnish for the end of the dish. We're going to slice the lobster in smaller pieces, that way it kind of mix up in your pasta. A little bit of garlic. So the prep work for this is really easy. Just kind of chop the lobster, a little bit of garlic. And we're gonna start with the pan. Step one, we're gonna to toast the garlic a little bit. As the garlic gets a little bit brown towards the edges, we're gonna add the, the lobster tail. And as well as a couple cherry tomatoes. We're gonna toast the lobster for uh, about a minute, a minute and a half. Let it um, sear a little bit. After we sear it a little bit, we're gonna add a little bit of white wine. Any white wine you like. It's whatever you kind of like to drink, I would say. The white wine we're gonna burn off a little bit. That way we don't get too much of an alcohol flavor later in the pasta. When we burn off the white wine a little bit, we're gonna add a little bit of the a fish stock that we do. If we don't like fish stock, we could also use a vegetable stock and make it a little, a little bit less fishy. But I like to do it with the classic vegetable stock. And also a little bit of uh, marinara, the classic tomato. 
So, so Claudio, for those of us cooking at home, yes. can we use a marinara from a, a can or bottle, or what do you suggest? Uh, you can, but I would recommend to actually make the marinara. So out of the can, it's really simple. I'll give you a quick two-minute uh, recipe to make a marinara. You could just chop a little bit of carrots, a little bit of celery, a little bit of onions. Put the, to um, the tomato can. Once the, the, it throws a lot of it's a little bit seared, the vegetables. Add the tomato can, a little chopped basil, salt and pepper to taste, and then we blend it. And that's basically how we get a marinara that's tasty. So spend the two minutes instead of using a, a, a bottle. Yeah. That's what you're saying. It's yeah. A, okay. It makes it a little bit more tastier, creative. It'll be a bland if you just put the can in the tomato. Um, pasta. We could use any pasta for the lobster pasta. Um, here we use a spaghetti. Um, also a tagliatelle is very nice. Um, any long pasta I would re recommend for a, a spaghetti lobster. So you see. Claudio, what's lobster in Italian? Aragosta. Aragosta. Yeah. Pasta's almost ready. We had a little pre-cooked pasta, or else we don't want to wait 10, 11 minutes for a pasta. Once we put the pasta in, mix it around, we're going to add a little bit of a wild arugula. The arugula you add at the end, that way it doesn't cook with the pasta and only welts it. And we also like to leave a little bit of olive oil at the end as well. We let the pasta always cook in the sauce the last minute, minute and a half of the, the cultura of the pasta. That way the pasta gains the flavor of the sauce that you're making. So let's say you're making also a bolognese. Um, a bolognese, you're gonna put the pasta in the bolognese sauce and you always cook the pasta a couple minutes with the bolognese. That way it gains the sauce. But in this case, we're making a spaghetti alla costa. Simple dish to make at home, fresh dish, great for the summer actually, but uh, spaghetti agosta. Beautiful, in less than 10 minutes, Claudio. In less than 10 minutes. Amazing. Very good. So uh, this could be also good as a, in Italy we always, a, a, as a starter, we ha usually have a pasta. Um, every day we have pasta, usually for lunch we start with a pasta and then as a second, we usually have a meat course. Um, so today for a meat course, we're going to do the salt in boca, the romana. So is veal salt in boca? Um, the salt in boca is a style. Um, the veal is, of course, the, the meat that we're using. There's many ways that we use, that we use veal. Um, salt in boca is probably my favorite. This is a veal top round that we do. Beautiful. Um, now, in order to make your cutlet, we're gonna slice a piece. Very slice. So out of this, we can make about two um, cutlets. We cut a piece. Now, step one, we're gonna pound it. To help you pound it, we're not just gonna pound it. We're going to put some plastic wrap, kind of wrap it. Now, if you skip this step, it gets messy. <laughs> um, pounding, you get the, the meat stuck to the, the hammer, and you'll start getting veal, ground veal all over the place. So, not.
Zeit. Now, question probably a lot of people are going to ask, how much do you pound it? Um, that's kind of up to you. I like to pound it not too thin, not too thick, but a couple pounds on each side it usually does a trick. So after we pound it, we're going to have a, a nice pounded piece of veal. Right. Next step to prepare the salt in boca. Sage leaf. We put always first the sage, and then we put the prosciutto. Um, if we put the prosciutto then the sage, while cooking you're going to lose the sage, um, and it's going to yeah, you're going to go sage leaf salt and boca. After the sage, we put the prosciutto on top. You always want to cut not too thick and not too thin. Um, usually, when we have prosciutto in Italy, we cut it paper thin. It's the best way to eat it on a sandwich. But on a salt in boca, if we do a paper thin, your prosciutto is actually going to disappear in the pan. So not too thick that it's, it's a steak, but you know, a little, little bit in between. Um, step one, we're going to heat the pan a little bit with the olive oil. Now, the salt in boca, we're just going to dust with a little bit of uh, flour. You could use any flour for this, nothing too special. So just dust, one on each side. Claudia, you don't have to salt and pepper before the flour? The salt and pepper, actually, that's a very good question. I mix it with the flour. Ah. Um, so, yeah, so when I dust it, there's already some salt and pepper in the flour as well. I forgot a part. Yeah, we dust, not too much, to wipe off a little bit. Very important, we dust, well, not very important. Um, if you like to do this dish gluten-free, actually you could just skip the dusting. Um, the meat will come out a little bit more tough because the flour gives it a little bit of the, keeps it a little bit more tender. But by all means, if you like it gluten-free, as well good. It'll just come out more of a, as a paillard with prosciutto and sage on top. So we're going to heat the pan, we want to get it nice and hot. Now when you put the, the salt in boca on the pan, um, this is a quick tip, I've seen places do this, places not, but I always like to put the side with the prosciutto face down in the pan. Um, one, because it gives it, a, it kind of makes the prosciutto stick to the veal and yeah. Huh. So prosciutto side down. Now it's going to take not too long before you turn it. Once you see the edges kind of become, give color, you could give it a nice turn. You can see here how the edges are starting to get a little bit color, so a nice turn. You see the pursuit again got a little bit of color. We'll do a little, a little Once the other side you give a, a couple minutes, couple seconds, like that. we're gonna add a little white wine. We got a little flame. Don't be scared. Once again, like the lobster pasta, we're going to burn the alcohol a little bit, just to give a little bit of a flavor to the veal. Um, once we burn a little bit of the alcohol away, we're going to have a brown sauce. The brown sauce is basically um, a veal, um, a beef stock that we make here, um, reduced and yeah. So so Claudia, if you're at home, you can, you can buy the, you the can beef also, stock? You can also buy a veal stock. Um, there's, I would recommend getting a thicker one. I've seen a couple in the store that are kind of more of a liquidy. Uh, we do here a little thick. We do not thicken it with any roux, with any flour, so as well as it is a gluten-free uh, veggie stock. And then I like to add meat, uh, 
touch of cream. Uh, barely. Just a touch. Just to kind of make it a little bit more creamier. We'll say. Smells amazing. Now the salt and boca, the veal, it takes, since it's thin, it does not take too long to cook. Yeah, color, we're actually already ready. good stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> I always like to make a little bit more, I like my dishes kind of saucy. Yeah. I like a little bit of sauce at the end. Make it also a little bit more thicker as well. I don't want too much of a thin sauce. Uh, wow. And then at the last garnish, we have a little a little part. Smells amazing, Claudio. Now, Claudio, can, can people find these dishes on your menu here at the restaurant? Yes, these are actually dishes. I'm making dishes that we serve in the restaurant. Okay, great. That we do. Um, except this last one. Um, this last one, <laughs> no. Um, Special that, treat. But the last one, I've had many people actually ask if I can do, and it's as you'll see, it's going to take not too long at all. Uh, it's a zabayone. The reason why I chose zabayone as well is because it's a dish that my, my grandma actually used to make. It's a quick dish at the end and very easy actually. You'll see. Uh, for this dish, a couple berries, sugar, this is a lot of marsala, marsala wine, and the eggs. Any old marsala? I, I like Italian marsala. Um, I grew up using this one, I've always stuck to this one, and it's Colombo. So. Yeah, and I've always liked the, the big bottle. <laughs> All right, step one for a zabayone, we're going to crack some eggs. Fairly easy to do. So we're going to separate about, I'd say, four or five eggs. Only, only the yolk we're going to use. Here I have it already separated four eggs. Okay. Right. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna whisk a little, mix the yolks a little bit. The one thing that's a little bit complicated about this dish, it's so fast that if you don't watch out, you can ruin it fast as well. Uh, so once you have everything prepped, we're gonna do a baño maria. Uh, baño maria is basically a, a water bath that we do. We don't wanna cook it directly on the flame because you'll basically get a, a scrambled egg in two seconds. So first of all, we're gonna let the, the Baño Maria hit. Um, once it gets a little bit hot, we're gonna start. Basically, very easy. You just put the egg yolks in the Baño Maria. We're gonna add some sugar. Now the sugar is kind of to the taste of the person. Of course, the 
the more sugar you put, the more sweet. Um, so it's kind of up at discretion. I like to put a couple tablespoons. Um, and as well, that goes with the marsala. The marsala, the more you put in, the more it's gonna taste like marsala. If you don't like marsala, I would put a, maybe a couple drops. Um, but I like the alcohol, so I put a cup, a little bit. About a, as well, a tablespoon. But if you like it, go for it. Could you use another alcohol? Uh, not, not really. really. No. So the zabayonet, since the bowl is already hot, we could just whisk. Now you're going to keep whisking until it starts getting thicker. There we do. And then you'll see it's like an egg white. When you, when you keep whisking an egg white, you'll start getting a foam. Also with the rosso di uovo, the egg yolk, the more you turn, the more, a little more heat. There we go. And you see it's starting to form. If you see it clumping a little bit, that means you gotta start turning harder. There we go. There we are. There we go. How do you know if you've ruined it? It, it gets clumpy. Oh. It, you'll start getting a lots of clumps. You'll see once you start taking it out, you'll see like two, three clumps. Go. But the zabayone. Okay. Not a lot. Yeah, because you should come out like a, like a little custardy. Yeah. Actually. And then usually the zabayone in Italy, we have places that just eat the zabayone like this. I like to add some berries, make it a little interesting. And as well, what we do, usually we put a little bit of a gelato, usually a little scoop of vanilla gelato. The contrast of the hot and the cold and the berries beautiful dessert that we do um, yeah this is the zabayone if any time you see this video and you want a zabayone even though it's not on the menu you let me know and I'll make you a zabayone so, thank you beautiful thank you Claudio wonderful okay. job can we see all three dishes of course So it truly is just like we're in Capri, Claudio. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing demonstration for us and I feel like we've learned a lot. Any parting words for us? Manja. Thank you for joining us for Palm Desert Food and Wine Virtual Experience. We look forward to seeing you in person March 25th through March 27th at the Gardens on El Paseo. Register now at palmdesertfoodandwine.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.